let's do this one last time. You know, before I played this game, I was looking at the Game Awards and saw this game as a nominee. I was confused as fuck. I was like, really? Over Starfield? But since I played it, I see why. Now, is it winning? Not in a million years. It has to compete with Spider-Man, Legend of Zelda, and Baldur's Gate. It stands no chance. The from me after i edit this video i try to get this out before the game awards but obviously that didn't happen and we all know who won it was Baldur's gate 3. now back to the video but it is deserving of the nominee spot i'll explain we all know mario he's just a little guy and around 2006 he got a revamp the new super mario bros games which after people played they were excited for what's next in mario but it was just more soup. But people liked it, until Nintendo kept beating us over the head with new soup games. And when you play four different games and they all start the exact same with a party, Peach is kidnapped, Mario is thrown somewhere, and then level starts, it can start to feel like you're beating your head against a wall. Even the latest new soup game is kind of just a port, and crazy enough, still costs $60. So it's the same price as Mario Wonder. But at the same time, pumping out new soup games did work for Nintendo. The port sold 16.7 million copies. And the Wii U version only sold about 5 million, but again, if you put a game on the Wii U, you can't expect it to sell. So Nintendo could have just banged out more soup, but instead they're like, fine. We'll actually try. You know, Nintendo is the master of not putting effort and still making millions of dollars. Mario 3D Collection, a barely upscaled, sold great. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, best-selling Mario Kart is just a port. Wait, actually no. The reason these sell so well is not because they're bad or made poorly or lazy, is they're actually good games. And if you put them on a high-selling system, of course they're going to sell like crazy. But we're getting sidetracked, this is about Mario Wonder. They changed the formula up a bit this time, instead of Peach getting kidnapped by Bowser, Bowser becomes a castle using the Wonder Fruit. This also makes the main gimmick, Wonder Flowers, touch one of these and you start seeing stars. I'll go in depth more later. But let's talk about some other things. The first and most notable thing is all the playable characters. I stuck with Mario through the whole game so you won't see anyone else in this video. But the classics, Mario, Luigi, Toad, Princess Peach is playable, Daisy is playable in her first 2D Mario game, Toad at his back, and Yoshi's and Nabbit's. Yoshi's and Nabbit's are like an easy mode of the game, and the game's already super easy as it is, so I don't know why they need to exist. Honestly, they're not fun to play, as they're just invincible, and Yoshi does have some fun features, but they can't use power-ups, and certain levels they just can't do because of it. I would rather Yoshi's be an item, or like, something you find and hop on as normal, and use in some levels, but I'm okay with what it is here, because it is just options. The worlds, they're pretty standard Mario worlds, you start with world 1, which is just grass. This is where the levels are introducing the gimmicks. Enemies are basic, basic design, but it did have some good levels here and there. Then there's the water area, not technically a full on world as it doesn't have a royal seed, but mostly water levels here, they are split up so it's not like you're suffering through water levels for hours. Then world 2 is cloud, I don't remember a ton about this world other than a few floaty levels. After that, World 3, which theme is more of a trial, this master dude keeps telling us to beat these trials. World 4 is the standard desert world, with some fun levels, and one of my favorites, this little rhythm level. World 5 is the dark forest with booze and doors that eat you, and lastly, Volcano which other than World Special is the best world. Then there is World Bowser, but it's not technically its own world, but these four levels were some of the best throughout the entire game. These levels are pretty good, some stood out more than others, but where the money for the levels come in is the Wonder Flower. Shit doesn't happen until those flowers start getting eaten. I will say, there were so many levels, it seemed kind of stretched out, like maybe a few could have been removed and put more time in others. 
At the same time, there's also break levels like these gauntlets and platforming challenges that help split up the game a lot. We'll say this, about a third of the levels are just okay. Now, a lot are optional, but I am doing everything. I'm not leaving anything behind. It's just when a third of your levels are okay, it can start to bring down the total enjoyment a lot. I would even go as far as saying as New Super Mario Bros. had better overall levels. Now, Mario Wonder levels are better when they're at their best. Those are also just meh. The Borrow Coins feel like they're just here, and since they're just world currency, there's not really a reason to collect them. And this might just be because I'm no longer a kid and I don't have infinite time to collect everything, but I do wish they had a little more purpose. Same with the Wonder Seeds, as yeah. they're just handed to you when you beat levels. I would say one of the most memorable parts of the games is actually the enemies. Rhinos, Mau Mau, Ninji's Return, Scaredy Cat Lemurs. Other than 3D Mario games, this game has the best enemy variety. The pool in this game is quite small compared to other Mario games, but I like these way more than others. The Fire Flower is obviously here, you gotta have the classic, same with the Superstar. Now the newest additions being Drill, Elephant, and Bubble. Bubble is the best as it's basically just infinite platformers and is what speedrunners use for cheese. Drill is only really useful in the levels that it's needed, but you can kind of just zoom past any level with drill and lastly elephant man it makes my day when i hear that but it is just your basic standard animal power-up now the reason there's not so many power-ups is because of the action badges things like a double jump floaty jump an extra wall jump that goes straight up or even becoming spider-man there's even these expert badges which gives you a heavy boost but at a cost the speed badge makes you run super fast but you literally can't stop and speedrunners make it look so easy. Oh, my favorite addition to this game is the talking flowers. I love them. I don't care if you turn them off. Nintendo made it and it made me happy. If no one else liked it, they were for me. Sometimes they can be annoying, but other times they're kind of funny. Like one wondering why he was born in the volcano. Or when another asks, how would I get over a ledge? And I just fall in it. They're a great addition, I personally love them, they're just, they're just little guys. But it's kind of weird to me that all the flowers got voice acting, but Mario and the gang and no one else can say actual words? Come on. But I guess that's just like the world feel, you know, it would be kind of weird to have to hear Mario mid-game. It's a me, a Mario. Let's get on to the main gimmick, the Za, the Grinch, Wonderfly. They are the most enjoyable part of the game. They make the game the most fun to play. Crazy shit just happens, changing dimensions, singing flowers. They got me with that one. Being a Koopa and playing a stealth game to avoid being eaten. Becoming goop, tripping so hard you go to space. It's all so much fun and it's the best part of any level. It's also why the special world is so great as every level is just the wonder effect for the entire level. Like the rhythm level we've all seen on YouTube shorts. Don't mean to brag, but I beat it first try. One thing that kind of just felt really terrible about this game was the boss battles. Most of them are just Bowser Jr. fights, and they felt like almost the exact same. And the airships you could just beat by damage boosting through. The best boss was Bowser, you have to jump with the beat, which was fun, but I felt like, oh, that's it? They make this giant deal about him becoming this castle, and you think, oh shit, I'm about to fight this massive castle. But no, it's pretty much just wham bam rock from Kirby. A disappointment, but a little fun. I thought I would have seen more because of what I've seen during this game. Which leads to the final thing, multiplayer and online. I bet this would be fun. I didn't play it at all. I didn't even go online, it just kind of seems like, oh hey, you get to look at other people's ghosts and sometimes revive them. Like not actual connections. But again, it was there, and it works fine. There's a lot of great about this game, but also just a lot of stuff that's just fine. Nothing bad, but not super high quality. Mario Wonder is solid, and it plays it safe. It is a good game deserving of that Game of the Year spot, but there could have been a lot to improve on. 
still kind of crazy that this game was over Starfield and oh, I forgot, over Hogwarts Legacy. They both really got outclassed by Mr. Very good. I want to shout out my friend Sonic Ray J as this might have been a very different video if I didn't talk to him about this game because he kind of opened my eyes just to be like, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're right about this. So go check out of his work if you enjoyed my stuff. A lot of care put into the game. I think maybe sitting down and just grinding the game out probably ruined my experience a bit. So don't just play it all at once because you probably will start to get bored. Take your time and explore the world. And remember, it's the first place that Mario has said, 